Abstract art is modern art, which does not look like images in our everyday world. This means it does not show what things look like in the real world, but it can represent or be about things from the real world. Abstract art uses line, color, shape, and form to make images that express ideas and feelings. Abstract art can also just be about how the artwork looks and, it, how, and how it makes the viewer feel. The beautiful colors and repetition of circles in both of these paintings makes me feel very calm, and the bright colors is very inspiring and cheerful. The painting on the right is called The Swan. How might these circles represent a swan? What do you see? Piet Mondrian was an artist who used black and white, vertical and horizontal lines, and squares with the primary colors yellow, blue, and red to express ideas of harmony and even places. Paul Clay uses strips and blocks of color to make abstract simplified versions of landscapes. This painting is called Fire in the Evening, and I imagine this is a campfire when you see it from far away. Sometimes when we first look at abstract art, we think it's messy, or it looks like a kid made it. That's actually a compliment, as kids' art is some of the best art I've ever seen. But anyway... Abstract art is not so easily made and usually is the result of years of training in making art. Most abstract artists are inspired by specific things or ideas. Vasily Kandinsky is one of the first abstract artists. He often made paintings about music. Kandinsky's painting here is called Fugue. A fugue is a type of music in which a melody is repeated in different ways. What do you see repeated here in the painting by Kandinsky? Can you see music in this painting? I'm going to let you hear what a, what a fugue sounds like. This is a fugue by Johann Sebastian Bach, who is one of the most famous composers who used and perfected the fugue. He wrote many fugues for organs to be played in churches in the 18th century. In this video, an artist uses different colors to show the patterns of repetitions in the fugue. What similarities do you see with Kandinsky's painting? And I'm just going to play the beginning of this for you as it's a little long. Did you hear the basic melody that was repeated? And then it starts to come in in different keys or different colors at different times and they all start playing together. One of my favorite painters is named Mark Rothko and he made large paintings all about color. This style is called color field painting because the viewer is faced with a big surface of color which, feel, which fills their field of vision. Rothko believes sitting and contemplating his paintings could lead to different emotional and spiritual states of being. So some artwork actually asks that you sit with it and spend time with it. It might not tell you everything it has to say at one first glance. Sculpture can also be abstract, Constantin Brancusi was one of the first abstract sculptors in the early 20th century. 
These were very shocking to people at the time because before this, sculptures usually showed an important person or event. Brancusi's work was all about form and movement. The sculpture right here on the left is called Bird in Space from 1924. And this sculpture isn't meant to show what a bird looks like, but what the movement of a bird looks like. How would you show what a bird looks like moving through space? Abstract art can get pretty complicated, but quite simply, it is art that is first and foremost about what it looks like and how it is made. Many abstract artists use innovative art making techniques. But what does that mean for us? How do we start? Some art uses letters and writing to create abstraction. Abstraction means making something abstract. After all, letters are made by lines. Let's take a look at some artwork I found inspired by or which uses writing as its base. Then we will create our own abstract art based on letters. This poem, All to Time Painting by Barbara O. Davis, was inspired by a poem by Robert Frost about grief and losing people called If I Could Give All to Time. These are part of a series of daily drawings by a Korean artist named Jung Woo Hong. And he makes these drawings based on imaginary writing and Asian calligraphy. So calligraphy is writing done with a brush and ink. I love this painting because it's painted on an old phone book. You can see behind there. I see both the letter K, but also just lines and brush strokes. This artwork also reminds us that many things from around the house, like old newspapers or boxes, can be used to draw and paint on. These two paintings are not inspired by letters, but different writing systems. Music and musical notes is a writing system. So this is another painting based on music and the way musical notes look like on a page. And this is a painting by Manier Dawson that is based on math symbols, so the equations we use in um, math. I love the work of Mira Schendel, who makes drawings on pieces of acrylic, that's plastic, using letters. We can see how letters are visually just lines and shapes. We give them meaning and sounds to make language. I can't find the name of this artist, but in this painting we see letters deconstructed or taken apart. We can kind of see the letters, but they're not full letters. We're going to try the same thing with our 